Well, howdy there, folks. Welcome into today's video. We got a few subjects to speak about here today. We're going to talk about PayPal stock. PayPal stock just made, uh, I would say, a pretty shocking move to some folks out there. We're going to talk about what happened, why it happened, what's going on here, my perspectives and opinions on that. We're going to speak about Palantir, a major change has occurred now with Palantir. And I want to put that together for you guys so you can kind of understand what's going on there with Palantir. Third thing we're going to speak about is the Russell 2000 has a 50% upward move that Tom Lee has been predicting. Has that now started officially at this point in time? We'll also speak about Fubo as well in that uh, little part there. And then we'll talk about my predictions for earnings season and some stocks I'm pretty bullish on for this earnings season. Before we get into this video today, I appreciate it if everybody smashes that thumbs up button. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you're not already subscribed hit that subscribe button and lastly is i will be doing a three to four hour beast live stream for tesla earnings on twitch if you want to follow me for that those earnings are in less than 48 hours from now if you want to follow me on there watch my live reaction to those earnings and also the conference call with elon musk and the team then check out the pinned comment down there Make sure you have notifications on for that so you can be notified as soon as I go live on there. Alrighty, guys, so let's start out here with PayPal. So pretty shocking move to some folks out there here today. This was as of Friday's close where the stock was trading at 65 and some change. And then, you know, pre-market, it was just going beast mode and it, it opened this morning at 67 and some change in regards to that stock, right? And people are really, really excited. I'll show you the sentiment on some message boards and how quick it shifted, <laughs> which is crazy quite hilarious in a matter of a few hours but we open there right people are saying we're, we're rolling baby we're going to 70 bucks oh yeah we can't be stopped and then from there the stock just dropped off a cliff and you know it tried to come back and it just dropped and it can't try to come back a million times throughout the day and it just ended up lower and lower and lower and it closed in 63 dollar range so a substantial difference obviously versus the open now the first question you might want to ask is what happened here like, why did this happen? Was there a big piece of news that came out? And in terms of what happened here today, there was some rumors about certain things were going to be announced at PayPal's event coming up here in the next few days. That's all rumors. That's just stuff that's thrown out. No one has any concrete evidence of anything. That's just all rumors. So the answer, did anything, you know, really happen here? No. This is just trading activity. People, this is a very active stock right now. PayPal has an event coming up here in a few days. They also have earnings coming up here very soon. And a lot of people are playing the stock from a lot of different angles, a lot of trading angles, puts and calls. I mean, you have things shifting around so much, right? And big money's doing this, you know, like Wall Street money's doing this, but then you have retail. I mean, this just cracks me up how it's fast sentiment shifted, right? This was this morning. People were posting about so much volume pre-market, um, you know, bullish. They were going to see at least $70 today, they were saying, right? We're going to see at least $70. No, 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 we never saw $70, and we actually uh, finished a $63. Uh, look at this. See $70 soon. This person saying seventy dollars is going to be today, uh, bullish. When you wake up and see this plus six percent, amazing, right? And then we finish down. There's always about a ten percent intraday move there for PayPal. Look at this, bullish. PayPal to seventy uh, to seventy end of today. Let's go. <laughs> it is always funny when I even see people talking about me on message boards. Jeremy Financial Education uh, will be making a killing off this one. Let's hope. Let's hope I'll be making a killing off this one, but it might take some time before that happens. Okay. Uh, uh, so far, I'm not certainly not making a kill on this stock, but, you know, maybe in a few months from now or a year from now, it might be a different situation. But that's always surreal when I see people talking about me on message boards out there. This one, wow, seems like sentiment about PayPal has finally changed. Unreal. Bullish. Finally, we deserve this. Bullish. I mean, people are very excited. And then what happened? Ooh, look at the switch up. Two hours ago. Bearish. Who paid $68 plus for this? Be honest. How about $309? Remember me? I named this pay puke, that person says. And then this person says, this garbage had no business going to $300. This new CEO had better shock the world, but I doubt it. <laughs> he should have to pay back all the money Longs are going to lose before and after earnings for opening up his big mouth. I mean, look at this. Look at the sentiment shift. The bears came out in full force. Holy smokers, this ain't no jokers. Welcome aboard to new, uh, welcome aboard new 
puke pal bag holders hope you're ready for another twenty dollar drop on earnings as usual <laughs> this person says are you serious wizard when paypal was up the past few days you were nowhere to be found on this board where do you come up with such garbage commentary oh man you know what's crazy about that is is paypal doesn't even isn't it a, even a heavy shorted stock you know but there's always going to be a certain amount that are short, certain people that talk trash about the stocks. And sometimes they're even, you know, will post on multiple different accounts and things like that. So just a little food for thought there. Okay. Now, what's kind of my opinion on this in, in those sorts of things? Okay. Here's where I go with this. So let's say PayPal was $53 today instead of $63. Or let's say it was $73 today. Let's say it closed at 73 Or let's say it really went crazy. It closed at 83 No, no. Let's say it went insanity mode today. Let's say PayPal went to $93 a share today. Does it make any difference? Does it matter to me at all? And the answer to that is no. It makes no difference. Why does it make no, no difference? Well, I wasn't buying the stock actively today. So regardless if I paid 53 or 93 it wasn't didn't matter because I didn't buy the stock actively today. On the flip side... If PayPal was 93, am I selling? No. No, I'm in this for a lot bigger gain than going to 93, I can tell you that. And so at the end of the day, it's irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. If this stock was 53, 63, 73, 83, 93, it doesn't matter. And so for me personally, I don't even care. Like the fact that the stock was all, you know, people were all hyped about it this morning and then it dumped hard, it is irrelevant to me as a long-term investor, right? It's no different than I could look at something like a meta, right? Meta went all the way down to 88 bucks. What about when Meta went to 100 and then went to 125 and 150, 175, 200? Did it ever matter? No, because I'm not buying any more of the stock, you know, after a certain point in time and I'm not selling the stock. So it's irrelevant to me as a long term shareholder. Everybody else can get all crazy about the moves and oh, it dumped and oh, it's now up big and oh, it's skyrocketed and oh, now it crashed. To me as a long term investor, this is irrelevant, man. It's irrelevant. All that matters is now the $471,000 gain. And all that matters is when the gain says $750,000 and then a million dollars on meta stock like it will over time, right? Let the short-term people play the breadcrumbs game, okay? These short-term people are going to be playing all these breadcrumbs games. We focus on the loaf of bread as long-term investors. They're going to be loading up on calls. Then they're loading up on puts. Then they're getting out of the stock. Right? You have some people that their goal was to get out of the stock at 67 a day. So when that stock hits 67, they said, I got to get out of this, right? Let them chase their breadcrumbs. Like, let them do them. They're going to make the stock go up and down all around real quick here in the short term. All of a sudden, it's going to be the greatest day ever. Oh my gosh, PayPal, we're going to 150. Next day, it's like, we're going to 50. Like, that's PayPal. Like, that's the stock market. Let, in, especially for a very active stock like this, this has become a very active stock. With a lot of retail money starting to play in it, a lot of Wall Street money starting to play in it, it's going to be, let them play their breadcrumbs game, man. We focus on the loaves of bread, and it's all irrelevant to us. We just can kind of sit back and watch it as entertainment. That's the best way I could put it. I'll watch the clown show as entertainment. It's, it's, it's fun entertainment, right? The way I kind of th think about it is, I saw this uh, video, it got suggested to me on Instagram uh, a few days ago, and it was talking about the average table game at the win Las Vegas wins $225,000 per month. And he was breaking it down and he said, you know, each table brings in about $7,500 profit per day, right? Which is just a startling number to kind of think about. And the way I'll put it to you guys like this is, is imagine you're the casino owner, right? And you're just sitting back and you're watching everybody play their games and oh, some guy's winning money over there on that table and oh man, that guy's losing a fortune over there and oh, the guy that was winning yesterday, now he's losing his money. Oh, and the guy that was losing yesterday, now he's winning. Everybody's just kind of playing their games around and you're just sitting back and you're just watching it all play out and that's the way I view it when it comes to these stocks and these little moves like this up and down and all around. Let everybody play their games in the casino. I'm sitting back, I'm the owner of the casino and they can do whatever they want here. That's my view on this, right? Now, this is very important for everybody watching this because I know a lot of you guys watching this, like you dream of not working, right? And not having a job. First off, I can tell you from experience, because I did that for over a year, it's not all that. It's pretty cool for the first like two weeks and then you start getting bored. So I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. But next component is having a job or staying busy can be your best friend as an investor. You can get actually far better returns Having a job and being busy, a lot of times people, it scares them away from the stock market. They think they can't do stock picking because they have a job like, what, what, what? I used to work like 50 hours a week at Quick Trip and still was able to, you know, 
I've had plenty of time to listen to conference calls, look into companies. Like, you have the time. Trust me. You're just making excuses if you think you don't have the time. I get that excuse from people sometimes. It just cracks me up. But having a job is the best thing. Staying busy is the best thing. Because the more time you are, are looking at your portfolio, thinking, ah, uh, maybe I should make this move, you're going to get you're going to get worse results likely over time. I experienced that in 2015 when I wasn't working and I took a full year off. I all of a sudden, next thing you know, I always felt like I had to make a move. I had to do something. I had to, and it produced me way worse results. And so having a job, staying busy guys, it can be your best friend because then you don't, you don't over trade the market. You don't think you got to always make moves and things like that. That's why I love posting YouTube videos. I love this man. It keeps me busy. I posted this reaction video earlier today on what Palantir is doing, right? Staying active, staying busy, staying doing stuff. If I didn't post that video, who knows? Maybe I just would have been sitting around just looking at my portfolio, looking at the fireplace, thinking, man, maybe I should make a move. Maybe I should do something. No, you got to stay busy. I recorded this video for the private stock group earlier today, utilizing the price to sales ratio properly. And the video goes all into depth in the price to sales ratio and how that works and how to properly use it versus not properly use it. Like staying busy. It's so important regardless of how much money you have doesn't matter how big my house is and my cars and all this crap. Like, you want to stay busy because I'm telling you, you'll get better returns over time. Staying busy. It's so dang important, okay? All right, guys. Next up here, Palantir, major change here. Then we'll get in the Russell Fubo in kind of my prediction for overall earnings. Do I feel confident going into this earnings season? Am I scared? Those sorts of things, okay? So Palantir, first off, this was my second best performing stock here today at a 4.89% move for Palantir up. Now, something very important happened today. Okay, remember I told you I recorded a reaction video earlier today on my reaction channel, right? But something very important happened. And I thought I was going to be reacting to this analyst that was going to be bullish on Palantir. And so, I, you know, I didn't pre-watch the clip or whatever. I watched it live and reacted to it live. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to be reacting to this bullish analyst because the way the title of the video was, it sounded like this analyst was bullish on it. And no, he had a sell rating. He was actually bearish on the stock. One of the most fascinating things happened while I was watching that analyst. And what I found is that analyst, despite him having a sell rating on Palantir, guess what? He did not have a strong bearish case on Palantir whatsoever. It was unbelievable. He didn't even sound bearish at all. Basically, his, his thing was like, oh, you know, I think there's better stocks out there to buy than Palantir. Like, I was like, that, that, that. That's your sell rating? Like, that's why you're bearish on the stock? It was incredible. And so when I think about Palantir, there's a major change that is now fundamentally happening in the stock. When you've got analysts out there that have sell ratings on the stock that are supposed to be super bearish and their best argument is, well, I think there might be some better stocks to buy out there. Think about how far this stock has come just in the past two years. If you were to go back 2022, right? Let's say we're back in January 2022. What was everybody saying about Palantir? Palantir can never make money. They're just a money furnace. They just burn your money. They're never going to make a profit. That was the argument that could be made two years ago at this time. Let's go back a year ago, roughly at this time or so, or maybe even nine months ago. And what was the argument then? Well, Palantir is starting to make some money from interest income and from treasuries, but, you know, they could never make real money. They could never make operating income, right? Then they did that as well. So now we're here in January 2024, and like the argument from the bear side is what at this point? Well, maybe there's better stocks to buy. Well, maybe Palantir's valued too high. Dude, if that's what your bearish case has, like Palantir's looking pretty freaking good now at this point in time. If that's your bear case is, well, the stock might trade a little rich, and well, it might be better stocks to buy. Woo, we're winning. We're winning, okay? That's come a long dang way in two years, I can tell you that much. In Incredible, absolutely incredible. So, whew, I mean, yeah, man, exciting times ahead for Palantir stock over the coming years, okay? We'll speak about, we're going to come back to Palantir a little later on when we talk about my predictions for earnings season, okay? Russell 2000, 50% move in Fubo. Let's kind of get into that, okay? So, first off is the Russell's made a pretty nice move here. In the past three months, the Russell's up 19%, right? So, there's no doubt that the Russell's heating up. Now, we're still a long way away from Tom Lee's. You know, Tom Lee said he's expecting small caps to roar, roll like 50% to 60% this year. He's talked about, right? So, you know, we're still a long way from that. But nonetheless, we are heating up. Now, something fascinating is still going on in this market. And I posted this inside market chat, inside the private stock group's Discord chat. 
is the S&P 500 closed an all-time high on Friday, right? The Russell 2000 is still in a bear market, down 20% from its highs. That's never happened before, and that's, that's fascinating. So what this should give you some confidence in and some, some conviction is the Russell has a long way to go. I know 19% in three months is a big move, no doubt. But the fact is, the Russell so far undervalued versus index, other indexes. This baby has such a long way to run. The only way you're going to get one of two scenarios to play out. One is the Russell's going to boom over this next year. And we're going to see just an epic move in the Russell in the small cap stocks in general. We'll talk about what that means for the stocks in just a moment. Or the second component is, and this one's scary, I'll be honest with you guys. This one is scary. And that would be a situation where the other indexes come down dramatically. And so they meet the Russell at, a, let's just call it, a lot lower valuations. So I mean the S&P 500, the Dow, and the NASDAQ all crash. Now, that could happen, but we need a big unemployment cycle to happen, a big recession to happen if you were to talk about a real crash like that. Or inflation to get out of hand again, which is very unrealistic at this point in time. Um, but if inflation got out of hand again, the Fed had to raise rates higher or something like that. Of course, that could affect things, but even that doesn't seem so realistic. So... The moral of the story is the Russell 2000 has a long way to run here, folks. And I mean a long way. A long way to run, okay? Now, check this out. I thought this was important because the Russell moved 2% up. Cool. But look at the moves for stocks, right? Fubo was up 5% today. Palantir up nearly 5%. Well, Palantir is not small cap, so we'll just exclude that one. Cheesecake Factory is small cap, right? So Fubo, small cap, 5% move. Cheesecake, small cap, 4% move. Honest, 4% move. Nordstrom, 4% move. Revolve, 3.8% move. I mean, that's incredible. And that's off a 2% move. So you go ahead and you can say, well, what if the Russell was up 20%? Then what is Fubo up? 50%, 100%, like, you know, that's where you're starting to get some, some really exciting things there, folks, that I think needs to be factored in. Now, in regards to Fubo, there's a few interesting things going on here, okay? One is, I'm looking at the Google Trends, guys, and it's way higher than it was at this time last year. So, whatever Fubo's doing, I don't know if they've reached, like, a critical mass or whether their advertising is doing better. And, by the way, I haven't even seen really any advertising recently with them. But uh, whatever they're doing is working. I can just tell you that. Based upon Google Trends data, we're so far elevated compared to where we were at at this point last year. And that's been pretty consistent for the past like six to seven months, to be honest, versus the previous 12 months. So it's great to see. But then on top of that, and this kind of went on the DL a little bit, but Fubo announced they're going to hike prices of their streaming plans by $5 per month. Separately at an investor conference on Wednesday, Fubo CEO David Gandler discussed building up freemium business on the platform as it looks to keep viewers engaged and drive advertising revenue. The price increases are currently in effect for new subscribers while existing customers will see a bump in their next pay cycle after February 1st. This means that Fubo's base pro package is now just under $80 a month. Its elite plan is at $90 per month, and the premier plan is at about $100 per month. Fubo also hiked the monthly price of regional sports network fee by $1. First implemented early last year, the addition of the initial $12 to $14 regional sports network fee came in alongside. And Fubo subscribers to, uh, to a star's add-on have to pay an additional $1 per month. Okay, so, you know, here, here's the thing, like Fubo's clearly focused on profitability, right? This is a move that's going to help them get closer to that profitability state, right? And so, me as a, let's say I wasn't a shareholder of Fubo, but I'm just a customer of Fubo, right? Would I go somewhere else with this price hike they made there? And the answer to that is absolutely not. Because Fubo still has all the channels I need, and they deliver it in the package I need it in, right? I want to be able to access everything on my phone, on my TV, everything like that. I want to be able to watch four games at once during college football season, all those sorts of things. And so, no, like I'm going to continue to stay signed up even though they went up five bucks. They would have went up 50 bucks. I probably would have stayed signed up just to be honest, even if I wasn't a Fubo shareholder. Now, with that being said, if I had to go somewhere else, let's say Fubo didn't exist, and then I'm going to YouTube TV. After YouTube TV, I don't even know where I'd go after YouTube TV. Because I'm not signing up for satellite. I'm not signing up for cable. Like, you got to be kidding me. Like, that's moving backwards. Like, you, no, 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 no. Once, once you get something like a Fubo, you never go back. You never go back. You're not, not going to be like, oh, let me go sign up for cable now. Let me go sign No, <laughs> no, no. That's like a time in your life and you never go back there again. And so I think Fubo is just in a great position here. And it's clear they're very, very focused on, on profit. So 
Um, I can't wait to listen to that latest investor conference they had. I haven't got, still have a chance to listen to that. So I'm looking forward to listening to that probably tonight. Okay. Now, what's my overall feelings and predictions around this earnings season? And what are some stocks I'm feeling pretty darn confident in for this earnings season? And what's maybe one stock I'm a little scared about? Well, in terms of my overall prediction for this earnings season overall, I'm feeling very confident in this earnings season. I do not think it's going to be any sort of disasters. I think we're looking pretty darn good for this earnings season. I think last quarter numbers for many of these companies are going to be good. I think the guide's going to be good, especially for all the big dog companies that really matter in the market. Apple, I'm a little shaky about. And if you're wondering the one stock I hold that I'm a little scared, a little scared, the answer to that is it is Tesla. Tesla is the one stock I hold that I'm a little worried. I don't know where that EPS number is going to come in at. It might come in much lower than anyone else are expecting. I don't know what Elon and the team's going to have to say about margins. What if they come in and say, you know, we're not anywhere close to trough margins or something like that? My gosh. Uh, what if they leave the door open to more price decreases? That everybody's going to freak out over that. So Tesla's a one stock I'm feeling not that confident going into these earnings. There's certain time periods in the past with Tesla where I was like, oh, man, they're going to come in. They're going to kill it. This is going to be awesome. We haven't been in that sort of time period for over a year now. And we continue to be in this just, I'm scared, you know, uh, in, in terms of Tesla, right? So we'll see. We'll see. The, like I said, the one thing that could save Tesla stock on these earnings it would be a situation where Musk and the team says, we're troughing earnings in the next one to two quarters. And you'll see, uh, or not, er, not just earnings, but margins. If they say we're, we trough in margins in the next one to two quarters and margins will start to move up in the back half of the year, you know, then, then things are going to get very bullish very quickly in regards to Tesla stock. Now, what are some stocks I'm feeling pretty confident in for these uh, earnings that are about to come out? One is Meta, very, very bullish on Meta. I think they're going to come in and report a great revenue number. I think they're going to report a really good guidance. I think the earnings per share is going to be up. It's going to be like a night and day difference versus where they were at at this time last year. And so I'm 0% scared about Meta. I don't think Zuckerberg is going to come in and say anything about, you know, they're going to spend super heavy on the Metaverse. I think, I think he's going to have... Good things to say about AI and their progress in AI. They're very, they're the most underrated AI play, I think, probably in the stock market, just to be honest. So I think he's going to come in and say good things about that. I think that's going to get some people very excited. And I wouldn't be surprised if the stock's 400 plus after earnings. Am I going to buy call options planning on it being 400 plus after earnings? No. But would I be surprised if it's 400 plus? Not at all. Not at all. Um, we'll see. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter as a long term shareholder. If, if Meta's 350 after earnings or 450, I'm not selling the stock, so it's irrelevant to me. But I would say there's probably a higher probability 450 after earnings than 350. But we'll we'll see where all that shakes out. Okay, Amazon is another stock I'm very bullish on for this earnings season. I think I think the story with Amazon is going to be twofold here. I think there's going to be a very exciting moment for Amazon when it comes to AWS. I think they're likely going to start posting very nice growth in Amazon Web Services again, and they're going to have much stronger commentary about AWS in terms of growth for 2024 than certainly they had last year when they were very muted about kind of where AWS was. I think all the big cost cuts are over for AWS. And so I think for 2024, we're going to get back to very nice growth when it comes to the AWS business. On top of that, I think e-commerce business is booming. I bet you they had a great Christmas time. I think they'll report that. I think guidance will be good there. They're still doing some cost cutting at Amazon, so I think that's going to help future profitability. I think last quarter's EPS is probably going to smoke analyst estimates. So everywhere I look across the board, advertising business, I mean, my gosh, just I think I think we're looking really good when it comes to Amazon. So yeah, I, I think I'm very bullish on Amazon for this earnings period. One of the stocks I'm probably the most bullish on for earnings. Obviously, the stocks had a pretty big move over the past year. But that could be said for many stocks in the market, right? Palantir. Palantir. I'm very bullish on Palantir. No, the reason I'm very bullish on Palantir is there's a decent probability they could give 2024 guidance. And I think if they give 2024 guidance, I think it's going to be a pretty good guide because all this talk and excitement around Palantir, AI, it's all going to start to come to fruition in 2024. And so, therefore, I think... Growth rates could be much stronger for Palantir in 2024 than they've probably been in the past few years. And if you think about the setup for Palantir, 
we're in a much more comfortable setting now going into 2024 than we were going into 2023. A lot of, you know, CIOs were very, very worried about what was going to happen in 2023. They were very concerned. We came off a big stock market move down. There was a lot of, I mean, obviously the Fed raised rates the way they did. And there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of people that were executives of companies that did not want to spend on a product like Palantir last year. And I just think a lot of those individuals feel a lot more comfortable going into 2024. And therefore, I believe that 2024's growth rates could be substantially above where 2023 is. Meanwhile, interest income is still going to be there. Meanwhile, the company just got to operating income. So I think, I think you're going to see a, a pretty big skyrocketing in terms of earnings per share in 2024 for the company overall. And I think that's going to bode very well. So yeah, I, I pretty bullish about you know, this earnings, this conference call, everything that's going to transpire there for Palantir. If that stock goes down in any substantial way on the earnings, I'll likely be a buyer in the market. Next stock up here that I'm pretty bullish on for this earnings is Fubo. Fubo, very bullish on Fubo. And the reason being is I think their subscriber numbers are likely going to beat where analysts are at. I think their revenue numbers are going to beat, and I think they're going to lose less money than what analysts think. So I think they're going to have a trifecta. On top of that, to add another piece, a fourth piece on top, I think their guide's probably going to be above where analysts are at. So I think they're going to come in and beat on all the most important metrics from them, and their guide's going to be better than people anticipate. They're also going to get a lot of questions about 2024, how they're feeling about bringing down the losses more. I think they're going to have some really good commentary when it comes to that. And so I remain very bullish on Fubo. I think there's a real potential Fubo's getting out of the gulag this year. I really do. Out of the gulag means $5 plus. So we'll see. We'll see. But I'm very bullish on the stock. And um, I think I think we're getting out of the gulag, man. I really do. Next stock I'm very bullish on is actually a surprising one, Target. Yes, Target. It's a smaller position for me. I'm bullish on Target. I believe this company is going to report a very good Christmas quarter. I think they had a great Christmas quarter, actually. And I believe their company's going to get back to growth. No one's ex actually, people are expecting revenues to go down for Target in 24. I'm expecting revenue to uptick. They got past all the BS they had to deal with last year. On top of that, consumer confidence in a way better place going into 20, you know, that'll be in 24 versus 23. Inflation isn't going to hit people this year like it did, obviously, the last few years. And so I think that's going to bode very well for Target. So overall, I think Target, uh, very bullish going into these earnings for Target as well, folks. Okay. Already less than 48 hours away from the three to four hour beast Tesla earnings live stream. Make sure you follow me on Twitch for that. That'll be pinned comment down there. Make sure you follow on there. Put notifications on. That's going to be incredible. Much love as always, folks, and have a great day.